Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston and Chester. I'm glad to hear this Tuesday morning. We have a good show line for special guests here. But first, let's take a look at our weather brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioner and Drew Pollard and hardworking crew taking care of our everyday comfort needs. High today, 88, low 80. This is a small window there. And water temperature at the end of the pier, 88 degrees. Matches our air temperature. Let's take a look at our river readings brought to us by Panama City, Coca-Cola. Good folks at Coca-Cola. We're looking at the Apalachicola at Brunstown, a 4.4, and the Choctatchee at Caribbean, a 2.8. Both rivers are low, both rivers are steady. The river is steady, what the old timers called it. I always got a kick out of that. One of the first words I learned was steady. Okay, I didn't know, understand what they're talking about. That means it wasn't going up and down. Tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. Getting back into good tides the rest of this week will be good tides. This morning, the high tide is around 535, and the low tide late this afternoon at 540. Wind becoming southwest, a seasonal at about 10 to 15. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back with our special guest. Welcome back, and welcome to our FWC officer, Chris Bowley. Welcome back. Hey, good to see you. Good Thanks see for you. having me back. Well, listen, we, we missed you last week because y'all been so busy. Y'all been tied up. We have been really busy between the 4th of July, deployments, all the things going on, yeah. staffing, you know, we're we're out there and we're getting after it. So it's been real busy, big summertime, high influx of boats on the water. So yeah. thank you for accommodating us. Well, I, try, I told you, Chris, I said, we're, we're flexible. Panhandle Outdoor is flexible. We'll try to work around the schedule. We're glad for, glad for you to come on and just share, share information and, and things we need to know. Some interesting things today uh, that we need to be aware of. So uh, let's get started. What all you got, Chris? All right, well, first and foremost, um, I hope y'all had a great 4th of July out there. I know we were out there working and Hope y'all, you know, got out there, had a good time, caught some fish too. It was great weather. Um, so with that, over the 4th of July was Operation Dry Water, which is a national boating event um, that focuses on uh, safe operations with sober mm -hmm. operators. And I just want to say thank you to everyone. A lot of the boats we stopped, we saw a lot of designated operators, people that were sober operating. And for the whole Northwest region of Florida that FWC has, so that's going to be 16 counties from Escambia to Jefferson, over the three-day holiday weekend, we only had a total of nine boating under the influence, which oh, I'm really happy to see as an officer. I'm sure it's encouraging to y'all out there knowing that people are doing the right thing. I mean, less than 1% of the boats that were stopped total over those 16 counties, wow. we found boating under the influence. So that's really encouraging. And, and I want to thank y'all for being safe out there. That's impressive. That is. Yep. And with the safe boating, I also want to talk about something we've been seeing recently. So. Y'all are probably familiar with the move over law on the road that if there's a police you know, officer that has someone pulled over that you have to get over or slow mm -hmm. down. So a couple years ago, a law was enacted here in Florida that's very similar to that on the water as mm -hmm. well. So if you see, whether it's us, Sheriff's Office, Fire Rescue, Coast Guard, any emergency vessel that's on the water with its blue lights activated, if you're within 100 yards of it, mm -hmm. you have to come down to a slow speed minimum wake or get you know 100 yards away from it so if you can't maneuver around us for 100 yards you have to slow down okay there's a couple reasons for that one is going to be safety obviously if if an emergency vehicle is on a vessel stop um you know safety you know we don't want a big wake to come and bump us around as we're doing an inspection um as an operator you are responsible for the wake you kick out so if your wake goes and does any damage damages boats does anything you know you might be civilly liable for it another thing too is if you know fire rescues they're doing cpr on someone on a boat if mm -hmm. if unfortunately that is to happen and you fly by them your weight could disrupt you know life-saving aid so it's been you know on on the books for florida statutes for a couple years now we've been trying to give a little bit of a grace period trying to educate operators out there but if you're getting out on the water and you see any emergency vessel that has emergency lights activated you must slow down because you can face a civil penalty for it and we're going to start really focusing on it because 
here locally, you know, Grand Lagoon in the past, Shell Island, it's starting to be a big issue where mm -hmm. emergency vehicles have their lights activated and boats are just flying by them and causing wake and causing damage and potentially causing you know disruption in life-saving abilities. So I just wanted to get that out there to y'all and make sure y'all are aware of it because um, it has been on the books for a couple years now and maybe not everyone's privy to it, but I wanted to use this opportunity to mention that because over the holiday weekend, we saw a lot of people violating it. That's interesting, Chris, and you brought up something that we are responsible for our wake, and I thought about a CPR or anything like that going on, so uh, most people, uh, you know, they don't look behind them. No, they and don't. And they don't see what that wake is doing. And uh, I guess that goes fresh water and salt water, the, the wake. It the does. Wake, yeah, whatever boat Absolutely. you Absolutely, so no matter what boat you're on, you are responsible for your wake, and as long as you're, you know, per Coast Guard navigation rules, you should have a proper lookout as you're operating a vessel. So mm -hmm. that proper lookout would, you know, be not only what's in front of you, but what your wake is kicking out. And, you know, not just for us, but when you're going through marinas, anywhere like that, um, going by people's docks, if your wake is causing damage to other vessels, then, mm -hmm. you know, you might be civilly liable for it. Yeah, that, that's something I said I wasn't quite sure, aware of or sure that we needed to uh, slow down. Most of us do it out of just common courtesy. We see a, a blue light coming or something, we just slow down naturally we see the blue light, but uh, some folks don't, don't understand that. But now it, no. it's a law. It is. It is It is in Florida statute, and it's not just for emergency vessels that are stopped. You know, it's not just if we have somebody pulled over on the water. Mm -hmm. If you see us in you know in route somewhere with our lights on that rule is in effect as well yeah. um which whether it's us coast guard fire rescue sheriff's office the pd you know we might be going to a boating accident we might be going to a situation where people are in the water people are injured and so you need to make sure that you either come down off plane or get away 100 yards i know sometimes some of our navigable waters you may not have the opportunity to get 100 yards out yeah. of our way but make sure that you slow down because you know, we could be running to any number of things and potentially, you know, it could be a friend or family member of yours that we're on our way to. So just keep that in mind. And that's been on book a couple of years, but basically you all been warning people. Now you're going to really start enforcing it. But what you're talking about really going to just let people, you know, so we got to y'all be aware of that and spread the word, too, because a lot of folks are not, not that aware of that. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yep. OK, let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back with FWC. Once a month, we enjoy them coming on. They have all kinds of information and uh, to share with us. The Office of Chris Bowley, Public Information Officer. Is that your yes, official sir. title? Public Information Officer. Grew up in Tallahassee. Uh, went to which school over there? Lincoln. Lincoln. Okay, the Lincoln Trojans. All right, but That's anyway, great. let me get you back on track. So what else you got? So uh, since the last time uh, an officer was here, um, so July 1st, red grouper closed so i want to make sure everyone knows it's closed we have seen a couple people coming in with some red grouper and have addressed those violations but just want to make sure everyone out there knows that red grouper closed july 1st a couple weeks ago um, the next thing is fwc issued an executive order to modify the recreational gag grouper season to match the federal one so coming up gag grouper is going to be september 1st through september 15th oh. so it's going to be a, a two-week season um, to match the federal regulations. And while you're out there, make sure gag and black grouper are very easily confused, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and they have the same size limit. So make sure you're ensuring that it's either a gag or black grouper that you catch while you're out there. Um, they, they do look very similar, um, but some of the things, a gag uh, grouper is gonna have a slightly concave tail, and then the black grouper will have the, um, a more square tail with that black uh, line on the back of the tail with the thin white one. So just make sure you're doing everything you can to ensure that you know the difference between the two when you're out there catching them um, because gag is only that two-week season. So yeah. if you're out of that season and you catch a gag and you think it's black, you know, <laughs> when we stop you, we're going to, you know, yeah, we got, who knows what might happen. So it, It's rare. If you've watched the show a long time. It's rare I pick up a pen and write down anything during the show. But when he said September 1st through 15th for Gag Group, I wrote it down. <laughs> we're going to set up some trips, I promise you. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. And for Red Snapper, um, I hope you all are taking advantage of this historic Red Snapper season that we're having this wow. year. Um, a, you know, we've been seeing tons of them coming in, unfortunately, some short, but we've been seeing people just have been killing it out there. So mm -hmm. hope you all are able to take advantage of it. The end of it is coming up soon, though. So July 31st, at the end of this month, will be the end of the first section of Red Snapper mm -hmm. season. Um, like we talked about, there was one time, a couple, maybe a month or two ago when I was on here, was talking about the Red Snapper season when they first announced it. It will open back up again in the fall. Mm -hmm. So it's going to open up again September 1st, 
and it'll be every three day weekend so friday saturday sunday up until thanksgiving but make sure y'all check those dates because september 1st is a sunday mm -hmm. and there are some holidays that are included in that red snapper season so labor day you'll be able to catch red snapper veterans day and thanksgiving as well so just make sure that you check the dates and you know because some of them that first weekend you know friday saturday aren't included so when that fall season opens just make sure you check the dates and get out of there and get yourself some red snapper yeah and it's, it's been a good year it's really been a good year i've seen so many pictures and all we've been on trip or two it's, it's been really nice yep. yeah and it's you know again it's a great showing of our efforts, FWC, on the conservation side, you know, taking the red snapper conservation efforts over from the mm -hmm. feds and, mm -hmm. you know, the whole reason that we have these conservation efforts is so, you know, when we see the snapper population rising, we can do these longer seasons and that's mm -hmm. why, you know, some of these conservation efforts are taken by us. I know people might get frustrated by, you know, oh, gag groupers only two weeks and, you know, well, why can't it be longer? But it's because, you know, when we're able to take conservation efforts on the front end later on, you know, we can have these historic long seasons yeah. and, and give people the opportunity to get out there and catch some more fish. Yeah, and, and a case in point, we talk about it all the time, is the scallop situation where, you know, we used to open way early now, it's August the 16th, and, and we, we've talked about it on the show on a regular basis. I've showed you all the studies and all, and that because we have more people out there, a lot more pressure on them, the same way with, the, with snapper and all, and so we, these studies they do, uh, I've, I've gotten to know some of the people over the years, 19 years I've been doing the show, I've had some really good conversation with marine biologists, with the, with the staff and all, and, and, and they're sincere with what they're doing. They're, they're trying hard. I, I remember that. Yeah. Absolutely. And I mean, with you, you look at black and gag, 24 inch you know, minimum size, mm -hmm. and you know, those size limits are all science based. A lot of it has to do with the age of breeding and all those kinds of things. So. I know it may be frustrating with bag limits and size limits, but just know that those efforts are taken to ensure that a healthy population can keep going. Yeah, I get tickled with these guys going to Louisiana. The limits in Louisiana, like what, 25 speckled trout or something, it's crazy. <laughs> and uh, I said, just sooner or later, they're going to cut down. In fact, I saw recently where they're cutting down on the size, I believe. So that, that's interesting. So. Uh, Anything else are coming up on on uh, on the, that end of it? Or? No, just um, trying to get everyone. You know, the the dates and everything are the biggest thing I want to push, just mm -hmm. because some of them are changing this year, um, especially with red snapper. But like I said, July thirty first is going to be when it ends. Mm -hmm. So make sure y'all are doing that. We have been seeing, unfortunately, some short snappers coming in. Make sure yeah. you ensure that you have a good measuring device on board your vessel, um, whether it be a, a ruler or you know a lot of coolers have. The measuring, uh, you know, have a, have some sort of measuring device on them, but you know, I've seen people that have a five-gallon bucket and try to say, "Oh, I'm using that as my 12-inch measurement." <laughs> Please ensure that you have a a good standardized measuring device on board because that's why, you know, I just talked about the importance of size limits, and we want to ensure that. We we know better. We know why you need to go by the rules, go by the law. I get, I tell you what, I've seen a lot. Uh, I don't know if you've seen them out. A lot of tarpon this year have been caught. Of course, y'all don't have to worry about it because they don't really take them out of the water. But They're not they're, supposed to. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, well, the ones, all the pictures I've seen have been right there in the water. I'll tell you what concerns me, and I know, I know two or three of the captains well. In fact, they've been in my class. When, uh, I take credit for them. They need to give me a kickback on what, what, every time they catch one. But anyway, uh, they're jumping in the water. People catch them. They're jumping in the water and getting a picture taken with them, which is legal, right? I mean, yeah. You know, so you're, yeah, if you want to take a photograph, please keep them in the water. Keep them in the um, water. Try to hold yeah. them there because they are. Yeah. You can't even take them out of the water. Yeah, the captains are really good about it. I, I've seen them. They'll resuscitate them and they swim off and you catch them again tomorrow. But one thing, Chris, and I, I hope it never happens. I worry about you know they fight that tarpon sometimes. Forty five minutes or an hour to go up and down the beach. You've seen them. Mm -hmm. And this is a thrill. I, I've, I've caught one before. I'm a huge, and it's a thrill. But I didn't jump in the water with mine. <laughs> I'm not going, I'm afraid of, you know, when a wounded fish, you have these sharks coming up. That's just natural, the sharks behind them. And I always worry about, you know, I jump in the water, they might have a scratch and be bleeding a little bit or something, or whatever, if you get scratched, and boom, that shark right there. So yeah, that, it's, uh, it's not against the law to do it. No, and it, that's definitely a concern, and I'm sure y'all have seen, especially here locally, um, not only just the sharks, but with the rip tides, um, the dangers of shoreline fishing. Um, if you are going to do any shoreline fishing, please, if, if it is double red flags, do not go into the water. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if, if you're going to shoreline fish, please ensure you're doing everything you can to do it safely. 
Um, you know, we'd hate for someone to be fishing and go out and try to maybe take a photo with the tarpon or something mm -hmm. and get ripped away because unfortunately we've been having um, some deaths recently and drownings because of that. Mm -hmm. So I, that was another thing I'd like to mention today is just if you are going to do shoreline fishing, please ensure if it is double red flags, don't go into the water. Even if it's only waist deep, you know, those double red flags mean don't go in. Yeah, and don't put shrimp in your pocket and wait out. Don't, don't do that. I've had people do that. I haven't heard about it much lately, but back in the day, they just put shrimp in the pocket. You might come out with no short time. Uh, yeah, and uh, they've, they've been accidents and all. But anyway, real quick, I'll end up on that tarpon. That is a lot of fun, and our fishery here has just exploded the last couple of years as far as captain doing it. And it's such a great sport. I mean, it's so much fun, like I said. And then you release it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it, it just don't get any better than that. Get some, get some great pictures. But my picture, I'm just leaning over the boat with them. I'm not getting in the water. We'll take our final break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Before we get back to Officer Chris Bowley, let's take a look at our fishing game time today, brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers in Port St. Joe, 7.25 to 9.25 this morning, and 7.50 to 9.50 tonight. Now, always, you know, when we have our, our officers here, we always like to do a case of the month, and, uh, and we've had uh, some opportunities, but this one, uh, this is interesting because it, this happens before, and you don't really uh, see it that often, you don't think, but then we don't know once you start out. So tell us about this case of the month. Absolutely. So we uh, stopped the vessel. I was on this vessel and you know, conducting a resource inspection. They had fish on board. And upon inspection in the cooler, we found a bag of fillets here. So okay. as you can see in the photograph, those are filleted and they actually ended up being trigger fish. Okay. And which you cannot do. So any reef fish, um, they must be landed in whole condition. And brings up an interesting point. As you can see there, there was a total of, so it was three fish, six fillets, all filleted out. And this is not only an interesting case and something that we unfortunately see quite a bit, but it goes into something that we've seen here in the area, at least locally in Panama City, is all reef fish and fish need to be landed in whole condition. We need to be able to, if we conduct a vessel inspection, be able to verify the size, the species, and all that to see if you, know, you weren't in violation. But one thing that we've seen is vessels that are coming in from fishing and they think, oh, hey, you know, and I don't blame them, I, you know, I don't, they, they may not want to get their hands dirty and fillet the fish. So what they'll do is they'll go to one of a, a local marina where they mm -hmm. offer services like that, maybe even some restaurants that offer the services of filleting fish for them, mm -hmm. get it bagged up, and then get back on their boat to go home, which is not legal. So I just wanted to make sure that all y'all know, if you are going to take your fish onto land and fillet them, they need to stay there. You can't get them back on your boat. Um, you know, if we stop a boat, we have no way to verify if, if the fish was mm -hmm. in you know what kind of fish it is and then if it's in season the size limit all those kinds of things and even if you get it you know professionally done and it's all shrink wrapped and labeled and everything don't take them back on the water because once they're landed they need to be landed in whole condition so make sure the head is attached the tail we can see what kind of species it is all those kinds of things now if you want to gut your fish while you're out there that's okay okay um, you can gut you can gut it you just can't fillet it now, there are some fish where if it is gonna be for immediate consumption, like if you're out there and you catch something and you wanna eat it immediately, you can do that as long as it's for immediate consumption, but out there filleting it, you cannot bring it back in. So you can it, cook it right there on board. You yes. can do that, mm -hmm. okay. That's, that's interesting because a lot of people don't think about that. You go get it clean now, like I said, they have some really good cleaning stations there like in St. Andrew and all. They'll clean them up, shrink wrap them, but you can't put them back on a boat and go home. You gotta, they gotta leave them in a vehicle. Exactly. So, yeah, as simple as that. That's, and, that's interesting. And unfortunately, we've seen it on some charter boats as well. And I know they're just trying to do right by their customers and you know save their customers some time and let them go with some filleted fish. But any sort of resource violations like that, we're going to seize it as evidence. And so if you're out there, if you take a charter out and your captain says, hey, well, let's go get your fish filleted, make sure that they don't go back on the boat with you because if they do and you get stopped by fish and wildlife, yeah. they might end up getting seized for evidence. So just ensure that you're always doing that because... You know, we'd hate to take someone's dinner, and if you're gonna bring fish in, just make yeah. sure that they're in whole condition once they're landed. And again, y'all help spread the word on that because that's important. Usually, if you fish all day, you don't feel like cleaning them out there. You want to just get, get back to the hill and get some rest and then clean them, but uh, that's, that's interesting. Get Absolutely. Good stuff there. I got a minute or two left. What else has been going on? Well, just to touch on that, um, even if you have a receipt or um, they are labeled, which I've seen that as well, where yeah. people have fillets and they do have them labeled, I mean, still, you hold up two bags of fillets and one says red snapper, one says, you know, 
yellowtail or any other kind of snapper, how 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 can we verify it? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. just ensure that. Um, I'm sure next time I'm on here, I'll have some more stories. Next week is lobster mini season, so if any of y'all are traveling down to the Keys for mini I season, them do, yeah. you know, good luck to you. And if you see me down there, say hello. And you know, I used to work down there, so if you flag me down, who knows? Maybe I can give you some good spots to go get some <laughs> some lobster. Well, but. yeah, one thing you need to do: make sure you take some time off and uh, do some stuff yourself, because I know y'all going to be busy. Oh, we'll be very busy. Um, it's just like it is up here on holidays. You know, high influx of boats, all those kinds yeah. of things, and throughout the rest of the summer, um, just make sure y'all are following all the navigational rules. Make sure you have a proper lookout, and make sure that you're doing everything safely. Yeah, I know there's a group of people every year that head down there for lobster season. I've never done it all, but they have a ball. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a lot of fun. Um, it can be, like I said, lots of boat traffic. So if any of y'all from this area do go down to mini season, just please be careful on the water. Make sure you're looking out. Uh, make sure you're adhering to dive or down flags, which yeah. you need to do everywhere up here, too. We've been seeing some violations with the dive or down flag. So if you see a dive flag up, make sure. Kind of the same thing with the move over law. If you're within 100 yards, you need to slow down or get out of the way. Yeah, we're going to, when we get close to scallop season, we're going to talk about that in depth and all. But you know, this, this is good stuff. It, it always fascinates me how the FWC is so flexible in taking the, the personnel and putting them in one of the hot spots. I mean, as far mm -hmm. as and y'all, y'all been able to do that really good. Yeah, we, we deploy all around the state, um, even into some other states, depending <clears> on if they ask our assistance for something. And also, we're able to move around on the day to day too. I mean, you know, we're out there. Uh, you know, this past week was the air show mm -hmm. in the Blue Angels air show in right. Pensacola. So we're out there enforcing boating safety. But just like that, if a boat comes in with fish, you know, we can change hats and, and work on that as well. So we're we're in we're kind of in everything. Yeah, well, one of the cases we had recently was that was that an air show was that last one they had and they thought they wouldn't be y'all wouldn't be out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and y'all stopped and that's that's great. Well as always appreciate you coming on and uh send us some pictures down there in the keys of some of those uh uh, uh, most of, what's the limit on them real quick? Uh, for lobster, it's six. six. Six per person, and the carapace has to be three inches. So, you know, take a family of four. Is there a boat limit? Uh, there's not a boat limit. It's just, uh, boom, 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 you know, individual yeah. bag limit. That's cool. That's cool. Well, that's, we want to do that one day. Well, Chris, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. We appreciate you coming on. And uh, tell Travis uh, that we were able to do the show without him, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell him. Thank you all for watching Panhandle Outdoors. We appreciate the viewership. Y'all do something good for someone else today. Have a great day. Enjoy the outdoors. Take care of it. And God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.